Hello, everybody. Welcome to the webcast, Wireless and Video Integrations for COVID and Beyond. My name is Sarah Flanagan, publisher for Security Systems News, and today's webcast is being brought to you by Innovonics. For over three decades, Innovonics has been providing commercial grade wireless to the security industry. We have two great speakers today, Eric Banghart and Chris Allen, who will be helping to learn about integrating Innovonics wireless sensors into video and other special applications, helping you get a fresh look at how to use wireless to provide relevant solutions for your customers in our ever-changing world. Before I pass the controls over to our presenters, I just want to go over a few quick housekeeping items. Um, please submit your questions over in the chat box. We'll be leaving time at the end of the webcast to get to those in a Q&A with Eric and Chris. Also, there are some handouts that you can download, so feel free to do that. And now I'll hand the floor over to Eric. He'll get us started today, and I'll see you after the presentation. Welcome from Innovonics and Security System News. Thanks for having us in today. I'm Eric Banghart, Manager of Global Sales for Innovonics, and I'm joined by our Northeast Territory Sales Manager, Chris Allen. Chris and I will review some of the benefits of utilizing wireless in your security installations, and share some of the lesser known and creative new ways that customers are using our products in the ever-changing security environment. Thanks again for joining us today, and let's get started on your journey to becoming a wireless guru. So what we'll cover today, we'll go through a brief uh, overview and kind of some highlights of utilizing Innovonics commercial wireless. We'll review a variety of ways to integrate Innovonics wireless with video platforms. We'll look at some real world applications to augment your projects and installations with environmental sensors. And then we'll also look at some creative ways that customers are utilizing our wireless to address problems or issues born out of the new realities of the COVID pandemic. And then we'll finish up with some Q&A. So a little bit about Innovonics. Innovonics has been producing high performing wireless sensor networks for the security market for over three decades. We built a great reputation with excellent range and reliability with a highly adaptable design that enables our network and transmitters to be added or integrated with almost any kind of security system, including intrusion, access control, or video platforms. Our highly scalable wireless stands out for the flexible design of our repeater network, allowing for easy coverage of any portion of a single building to enormous multi-building campuses spanning many acres or even miles. Those familiar with Innovonics know that we design to a life safety specification. What that means is when our systems are installed appropriately to spec, you can count on 99.9999959% of the time that our alarms will get through to the application. That really rivals or even surpasses the reliability of most wired systems. In addition, we fully supervise all of our transmitters and network components and have a commitment to offer as many UL listed products as possible, critical characteristics necessary for success in the commercial wireless security market. So what else do you need to know about antibiotics? So we've established a niche to provide proven commercial grade wireless network and endpoints to almost any project. We don't have a proprietary head end panel or system, but rather provide a wide variety of panel and system partner options for connectivity. In general, add-on relay receivers and serial receivers have been the backbone of how we interface with all types of systems. In recent years, Innovonics has released IP receivers, combining the functionality of our serial receivers with the flexibility of IP appliances. This includes our latest, the EN4080 with cloud connectivity. Feel free to reach out to our team for guidance on which receiver fits your product project best but also stay tuned as you'll see more innovation and capabilities from our receivers and transmitters in the coming years. Using our proprietary 900 megahertz protocol, we squarely point ourselves at the commercial security market. We'll get used in some high-end residential to solve performance issues, but we fit best in the commercial environment. A lot of design logic is embedded in our network and products. Frequency hopping to avoid interference, low current dry endpoints to extend battery life, and a security hardened protocol, independent network, intelligent repeaters, all those features are perfectly suited to commercial installations. 
In addition, Antibiotix does have a robust family of transmitters and sensors, which is extended even further with our universal transmitters. Pairing our universal transmitters with all types of third-party sensors gives you the ability to convert those unique sensors to wireless, greatly expanding your wireless toolbox. So why 900 megahertz in commercial? So metal beams, concrete, heavy stonework, lots of HVAC, metal venting or equipment, crowded RF environments, that's where we really perform best. 900 megahertz, megahertz has a shorter, smaller wavelength than other wireless products on the market. So it passes through those tighter spaces of commercial construction more easily. Frequency hopping spread spectrum RF hardens our interference immunity and our short on-air alarm time makes us unlikely to interfere with other technologies. Our superior repeater network design assures excellent range and excellent alarm signal propagation. The bottom line is not all wireless is created equal. We encourage everyone to do their due diligence and learn the unique characteristics of different wireless offerings out there. Waveforms, network characteristics, knowing those and, and learning those uh, will pay off with successful installations and happy customers. So the next several slides we consider almost classic in nature because we've used them for so many years in our trainings. The images here contrast the big differences between residential or even light commercial with the heavy construction of commercial installations. Metal beams, concrete pad floors, steel studs and walls, heavy stonework, all those things I mentioned before, those are all very common in commercial or industrial security projects. You need to use a wireless signal capable of penetrating or working around those obstacles. Frequency hopping spread spectrum 900 megahertz is an excellent choice to get your alarm signal through these difficult construction environments. The images here speak to the differences between 900 megahertz waveform and the three or 400 megahertz, or megahertz waveforms commonly used in residential or light commercial. Here we've depicted a concrete wall with a rebar grid pattern embedded, a common practice in commercial buildings. 900 megahertz has a significantly smaller wavelength, roughly the size of a baseball, than that of residential wireless in the 300 or 400 megahertz bands, roughly the size of a basketball. So that smaller waveform allows our small alarm signals to pass through obstacles such as rebar and concrete and seek a path through, that, through those kind of smaller available openings in commercial buildings. This again speaks to the importance of utilizing the right kind of wireless for your project and why some have experienced poor wireless performance when installing inappropriate wireless product lines in commercial installations. When using 900 megahertz frequency hopping spread spectrum technology, we're broadcasting across multiple channels, uh, specifically 902 to 928 in the ISM band. We're also broadcasting with frequency and time diversity and sending redundant messages. This allows our alarm messages to easily get around interfering RF. 300 or 400 megahertz systems are referred to as narrow or even single channel technologies, which are much easier to block or interfere with. Think of this as like driving a car down a one lane road versus a multi-lane highway. If something is blocking the one lane road, you cannot move around it. But on a multi-line highway, you can just switch lanes and avoid the obstacle. In wireless, all this happens in microseconds. So some of the not so secret sauce of our Innovonics network are repeaters. Repeaters help to scale large coverage areas and facilitate getting the alarm messages back to the head end effectively and efficiently. The methods that different systems use to connect to repeaters and transmitters matter. Innovonics repeaters, they create a true mesh self-healing network. There's no home run wiring back to the head end. We've got minimal limitations on the communications. Some systems have a, a limit of repeaters that you can use. They may limit um, transmitters talking to specific repeaters and they may uh, their repeaters may not talk to each other. All of those are not the case with Innovonics Wireless. Those are hallmark features that we present 
as well as be the ability to go 10 hops deep through a repeater infrastructure, giving us incredible range to our systems. And then we always have a 24 hour backup battery on board with our repeaters, just in case you lose power. As soon as that power comes back on, those batteries recharge and you're set to go again. This is another recommendation to do your homework and understand how different wireless systems accomplish building a coverage network. Educate yourself and save you and your customer from installation nightmares. So just in summary, some of the top benefits of uh, commercial grade wireless and Inavonics in general, we provide that superior wireless performance, long range, reliability, and really unique flexibility to add our wireless to all types of systems. Multiple paths of integration and options to your unique project. We also offer a lot of uh, labor savings through time and cost reduction. This also has the added benefit of reducing human exposure for your customers, employees, and for your own installation technician teams. Uh, very important in today's pandemic environment. Wireless installations also um, have less business disruption for your customer. These are quicker, simpler installations. Uh, you can eliminate some of that expensive trenching, uh, very loud hammer drills and other disruptive tools, expensive overhead lift rentals, uh, doing long uh, uh, cable runs or long conduit runs. All of those are complicated uh, business disrupting things. Um, another thing that wireless can provide is just the ability to preserve the aesthetic of any installation. This is really critical in historical buildings or where you've got sensitive architecture or maybe even a high tech environment that you really need a light touch with your installation. So in general, it's always easy to add on or evolve any security system with wireless. Really easy to expand, contract, or change because you're not pulling wire, you're not having to um, drill through walls again. It's very easy to change or adapt a system. Uh, we'll speak later to how you can add on environmental sensors, a great addition to any security system. And then of course, duress and panic alarms really round out any design and are really relevant in any system especially with today's increased focus on occupant safety. And then finally, we've really made our mark and earned our reputation in intrusion, but don't forget about access control and video, which we'll expand on further in the next part of the presentation here. So there's my summary of the first part. Uh, this next section, as I said, we'll do a deeper dive into video, environmental sensors, and unique pandemic applications. So here's Chris Allen to amp up the knowledge and fun Take it away, Chris. Thanks, Eric. We're going to talk about use cases for wireless sensors, specifically as it works with, with video and, and other systems, and also how it works in a COVID world. So, you know, wireless motion sensors or, or can improve the motion de detection accuracy. Oftentimes with the video management motion detectors, you can get false positives, moving foliage, all these things that, that affect that at longer ranges. So by going with an exterior sensor now, you can reduce distractions and reduce operator fatigue. So what I'm gonna show you first is some of those sensors and that you can add to your arsenal. Innovonics makes a whole host of transmitters all for different applications. We have motion detectors. The EN1210 universal transmitter can monitor anything with an open or a close. We sell the 1941 to other companies that embed our wireless into their products. We have a series of, of duress buttons that can be used in different applications. And we're starting to see now that convergence between the building management systems and the security systems. And we have been making environmental transmitters for years. We have temp, temperature and humidity, standing water, and pulse counting transmitters where you could even people count if you wanted to. Optex, who is also a inter uh, Genetech integration partner, uh, has the I-series units. And these are outdoor photo beams and PIRs they have Innovonics embedded in them, so it's one set of batteries to maintain, and they can do perimeter, outdoor, very rough environments. So if you have questions, 
feel free to call the Optex rep and just mention that you need it to be Innovonics enabled. In order to speak with other companies, we have different receivers. The Innovonics EN4080 is an RF receiver. It has BACnet IP output or an Ethernet port or Wi-Fi. It's PoE capable. You can power it PoE. And, it, and with the Genetech BACnet plugin, it can speak directly to Genetech Security Center. So here we are with the Genetech Security Center. And it's important to keep in mind that you can unify systems in this way where we are resident with other systems and it's all it's all behind the scenes to the end user. So if you see here in the Genetech Security Center, you see intrusion, point of sale, locks, occupancy temperatures. We were mentioned I, I mentioned those earlier. And all of that can be on one screen. So now if someone hits a duress button, you can turn the camera right onto the area in question. And this makes it a lot easier for the people in the command centers to see what's going on in a building. And that's what we mean by this unification mindset of, of making it easier to see what is happening. There are actually several uh, places this is being used in Homeland Security, uh, prestigious dance school in New York City are all following this concept of duress buttons actually turning the camera on uh, during an event. The EN6080 is another Innovonics RF receiver that's PoE capable, but it works, with, um, but it's milestone compatible. So what you see is there's a company called Aptex who make the BTX or bridge to the Expertec, which is the milestone product. And they can take Innovonics signals of transmitters and outdoor PIRs such as Optex, bring that in through the 6080 through their middleware and then convert it into Milestone, which will then turn on the appropriate cameras, presets, uh, and triggers. If you go to the Aptex website, you will see uh, they have some video clips of where they're walking around with a duress button and they can turn on cameras in an area as well as the outdoor PIR. So you get a great view of that and see how that happens. You know, with SOX being asked to monitor and respond to so many potential situations with less personnel, it it become a time where situational awareness is everything. And so what we do is by using these exterior transmitters, you know, to the camera system, we are helping move people out of the situation where they have to make instant decisions, where the net result is that a well thought out and planned response can be automated. Bosch uses our EN4200, which is an RS-232 serial receiver. And that's not very important. It, whatever system you're thinking to use, just feel free to contact the Envonic sales rep and we'll point you in the right direction. But what you have is a scalable solution. So here we have a transmitter that is on a, uh, or transmitters, a receiver that is on a burglar alarm panel. And it's the burglar alarm panel, in fact, that gets married into the access control in video. Like I said, this is totally saleable, but scalable, but it gives you a seamless integration. So you can do things like uh, see an open fire door or have a door contact in a closet activate when an, when an item is removed or outdoor motion detectors or vehicle detection. It all leads to system integrity. In Innovonics, all our devices are supervised, and so we are part of that system integrity. This was a really simple solution for activating cameras. The, the customer, Illuma in Baltimore, had a scrap yard. They were getting a lot of thefts at night. So the answer was to put in 14 cameras with analytics, but they were getting 200 false alarms a day. So the next solution was then to put three outdoor PIRs in a pattern that would 
turn on cameras at night and the false alarms were eliminated. We've mentioned that um, an Innovonics transmitter can go to more than one receiver. So we put another receiver in there and connected that to the burglar alarm panel. So those same outdoor PIRs were not just tripping into the, uh, the receiver that turned on the DVR. Those same ones were going to a receiver that were talking to a burglar alarm panel, and now they had an audit trail of any events during the night. Once again, this is a very simple solution, easy to deploy. You know, our world certainly changed uh, with COVID and we were already seeing that convergence of uh, building management systems with security. You're seeing that even more now as, you know, as as people are looking to create safe spaces and keep our internal environments healthier. So we're going to talk about a few of these cases um, with IT rooms that have uh, overheated and uh you know one example was a college in connecticut lost half their cameras because one of the it rooms overheated the answer was to put an en1723 temperature transmitter in there and now security gets an alert so that they can send a guard to open a door or deploy a fan at the same time once again an intervonics transmitter can go to more than one receiver there is a backnet receiver on the building management system that those temperature sensors report to. So the facilities people are getting these alerts at the same time. That whole process is now automated. We make two types of temperature sensors. Um, the EN 1752 is designed for burglar alarm panels where you're simply where you simply have a high and a low, and that we're just giving a a closure for an alarm event and it's basically a two zone transmitter. So you program the high and the low, it will activate on alarm. We also have the EN1723, which sends the raw data. So it will tell you the exact temperature and you, and you set up how, how often you want those temperature increments to come in. They have a, uh, they have, what we have on there is called a delta T, so that if it starts swinging wildly, you can get alarms sent right away. You don't have to wait for the uh, program time. If you need to do freezers or something like that, we have optional probes that can be put on so you can keep the temperature or the, the temperature sensor in a controlled environment and put the probe into the hostile environment. Um, and so with our backnet receiver, we can take those signals into the BMS system. You know, you spend a lot of money putting in access control and camera systems. And the one thing that can take it out is on the inside, and that's the temperature of the room. So you can add a temperature sensor just to complete that part of the security project. This is becoming, this is a relatively new product in Avonix, but it's becoming really, really popular. And that's our EN171551 water detector. And um, it works with both a Honeywell or a Flare probe. And I've used these in 50 story high rises uh, where the rooftop unit leaked and through 40 IT closets before they caught it. Um, I'm seeing it in apartment buildings, in the bathrooms and the kitchens. And it's not about the walls, it's about the neighbor below you and their artwork on the walls. So insurance companies are starting to mandate this type of product. You know, it was in, uh, one of them went off on the 80th floor of a high rise in New York. And by the time they got there, they said the water was two minutes away from hitting the elevator shafts and it would have cost them a million dollars to clean that up. The system paid for itself that day. And then some. This is a great product uh, made by Engage, and it is designed to monitor the fire extinguishers and eliminate the need for the monthly inspection where you go and you see someone signing off on the tag. What this has is a tether that's connected to the fire extinguisher and the gauge, and it'll tell you if it has low pressure or if the devices move from the wall. It also has an ultrasonic motion detector. And that will tell you 
and it measures out periodically. And if, if there's blockage for more than 30 hours, it will give you an alert that something has been put in front of the fire extinguisher. Like I said, it eliminates the need for the monthly inspection. And during the pandemic, a one Fortune 500 company wrote that they are safer because their extinguishers are being monitored, but they've lowered the bio exposure of the building because they don't have to have people from their facilities department go into the building to just to inspect fire extinguishers. Flare is a partner of Innovonics that makes several products. One of them is a portable enunciator, and we've seen the pop up uh, doctor's offices for testing or uh, where a unit is converted real quick for COVID patients. This, this enunciator has an Innovonics receiver embedded in it that's, that fires off LEDs. So these are quickly changed with names. So as different patients move in, your customer can update this quickly and you don't have to go in and do any reprogramming. And it's, it's, a, it's a perfect solution for temporary enunciation. Flare also makes a ventilator monitor. And you know what that is, is it's a quarter inch jack that goes into the side of the pull cord station. So the device can be activated when the ventilator, if a patient stops breathing and the ventilator goes into alarm, it can activate there. It can activate with a pull cord or just pulling down on the switch. Um, so it can be manually activated. The only thing you need to know is what brand of ventilator you're going to plug into so that you get the correct jack mounted on the cable. Now, I think everyone in the industry is, is familiar with Stopper or STI. And one of the things you can monitor or with their 6400 series product is doors being opened. So you get a local battery operated alarm on the door if it gets opened. However, it has a set of contacts that you can connect to an EN 1210. So now you can bring that signal from way upstairs or wherever back to the security command center if you need to. It's also perfect for temporary um, exit doors that may be set up because they're in a hospital if you're adjusting one of the wards for COVID patients. Um, it get, and it, it's great for public buildings. I see them go into a lot of libraries the apartments on roofs because, or I'm sorry, in apartment buildings, the doors leading out to the roofs because that could be the first sign of drug trafficking. And um, we just put an EN 1210 on and monitor that. These outdoor testing sites where we've been selling a lot of uh, duress transmitters that go into them. And so as you look at the two pictures, you can see that these tents are outside the hospitals but we're actually taking that signal with the repeater network, putting it into the hospital, into the security office. And some of these systems are actually connected to the radio so that security can respond even faster. With the new vaccines, monitoring them for temperature obviously has become a, a, an important factor. We can go down and in, well into the sub zeros, um, refrigerator, the minus 80 refrigerators and monitor them. We have a temperature sensor. What you see here is a temp sensor going into a uh, with a probe that's going into the freezer. But you also see a door contact on there like our EM1210 would monitor the door in case the door gets left open. And they even put a tilt switch in this one so that if someone moves a refrigerator, you get an alert. It's a different alert. It's not an alarm, but you get an alert that the refrigerator has been moved and then people uh, facilities will have in their their policies that someone has to go verify where that freezer is gone because it's a common problem where freezers get moved from lab to lab believe it or not and then no one knows where they are when they go in alarm you know empty buildings and this is the unfortunate really unfortunate part that we've seen with with covid but so even though the building is becoming vacant it doesn't mean that people are not responsible for that building and so you have HVAC units on the roof, you have pipes that can leak. And so what we're saying is think beyond intrusion when you look at an empty building. You know, we have the water bugs, we have the temperature sensors. We can tell you if the temperature is getting too low or pipes could freeze. 
the device at the top is called the WIP. It's available at the security distributors. And that's usually an HVAC technician will put that in line with their coolant. And that way, if someone cuts that to try and get to the copper, you will get an alarm. And then you'll know that someone is up tampering with the HVAC systems on the roof. And how do you know all this will work? We have a survey kit and it's an RF range tester and it will help you determine your repeater usage and placement. It works with on both Android and iPhones. It's a smart portable receiver. It's inexpensive. And so you will be able to figure out where you need repeaters or if you need repeaters before you even do the installation. So Eric, I'm going to send it back to you now. OK, thank you, Chris. Great information about uh, many interesting applications of our products. So we've got many resources listed on our website. Please reach out to our team if you need help fitting the right product for your project and consider joining us for other virtual events. Thanks again for your uh, attendance today and uh, have a happy wireless installation. Well, thanks very much, Eric and Chris. That was pretty fascinating stuff. Um, it, it just never would have would have occurred to me that an, an empty building could have dangers and threats and things like that and how all the applications in Innovonics has been affected by COVID. Um, people, please go ahead and submit some questions over in the chat box. We do have some coming in. Um, besides video, I, I think you may have touched on this a little bit in talking about Milestone and Genetech um, and Bosch, but besides video, does Innovonics integrate with other platforms? What would the application be? Uh, sure, I, I can take a stab at that and Chris can, can add on here. So um, yes, video, uh, Chris went through some great integrations that we can do with a uh, video platform. So, but really we kind of earned our stripes in the intrusion world. So intrusion, bird panels, um, you know, classic applications would be glass breaks and uh, motion detectors and uh, uh, door contacts and things if somebody opens or closes windows or doors and things. Now those are some of the really traditional um, intrusion applications out there. Um, we also are get used probably uh, more than we ever before in access control. So um, multiple integrations, RS2, open options. We can even go into very large uh, secure um, enterprise type systems but with our products uh, integrated directly in with those. On the intrusion panels, you know, some of the name brands that we work with, Honeywell, Vista panels, Bosch systems. Uh, Interlogics, we've got some JCI integrations, Sonitrol, so lots of different partners that we have and platforms that you have the ability to integrate our products in there with. Um, and I would, you know, there's so many things out there, I would just uh, really invite anybody to reach out to a member of our team. Uh, we'll either get you one of our, our uh, tech services, excellent, they can tell you a lot of things, uh, how those work, as well as any of our field reps are very technical in nature and can fit the appropriate uh, system to what you might want to use in your portfolio. And Sarah, sometimes it's just as simple as a relay connected to an input on an access control system, and we have a push button unlocking a do door remotely so you don't have to pull wire to a receptionist desk in the middle of a, of a foyer. Right. Access control, we get used a lot on just uncontrolled openings. Very uh, seldom do you cover every opening with an access control. It just gets pretty expensive to cover everything. So some of those uncontrolled openings, just an easy uh, contact closure that we can put on there. Just, just let somebody know that somebody's uh, in and out of a door. Okay, that's okay. great. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, we definitely got a bunch of questions coming in. Um, I have a question. What is BACnet? BACnet is Building Automation and Control Network. It's a okay. true universal protocol typically used in the uh, building management system, the HVAC world. Just be careful of one thing if, if a manufacturer says they're BACnet compatible. If you're planning on putting Innovonics on it, make sure they can receive BACnet, not just output BACnet. Okay. And then a follow-up that's actually in the chat box that I wanted to ask my question before it was, 
is the BACnet receiver monitored? I think you mentioned in talking about the university example, but I'll let you take that one away too. Yep. All our devices are supervised. The, the transmitters are checking it in every three minutes, plus or minus 10 seconds. That's on an algorithm. The repeaters are checking in as well as the receivers are monitored, not just to make sure that signals are coming through and they're connected, but also if there's a jam of the channels, it'll create a jam alarm. Okay. Anything from you, Eric, to add or? You know, just important to know that we design most of our products, you know, all of our products with supervision, and that's not the case across all other offerings out there. So, you know, it's especially critical in things that uh, have, you know, require um, elevated uh, certifications like UL or something like that. Um, you know, we go through a lot of pain and uh, uh, to make sure that we adhere to these higher levels of uh, product in many cases. So, you know, that's important for a lot of things or designing to life safety applications. Those are super important and, uh, you know, appropriate for those type of installations. That's great. All right. Thank you for that. Um, here's a, here's a pretty simple one, I think, is the tilt, uh, nope, is the tilt net, is, is the tilt sensor an Innovonics product? No, it's actually a, uh, tilt switch, uh, made by GRI and it's connected to our EN1210. Um, they have different ones in California. You can't use mercury here on the East coast. We can, because I'm from New Jersey. We're used to caustic substances. <laughs> And, and so we're just connecting to a set of contacts and I, I've used them to uh, protect our repeaters in rough areas where they can actually fit inside the, the case. We, we have a, a tamper uh, connection in there. I've used them on expensive uh, computers in a the college, these $10,000 computers that can fit in a backpack. And we just put a tilt switch in there so if anyone grabs it or tries to do anything with it, you get an alarm. We we touched on this a little bit in the presentation too, that the universal transmitters give us a lot of flexibility to use those third-party sensors. And you know, we can't make all the sensors out there and there's lots of creative and unique applications that people can um, fit like a tilt sensor for that particular application. So it really expands that toolbox for anybody. Uh, lots of different sensors can be connected to these universal sensors. Um, essentially bringing them into our network and to whatever head end application that they're using. So um, great way, lots of lots of neat things out there you can do with these. Okay, that's great. And then a kind of a, a, a little follow up to that one. Um, do, do these wireless contacts communicate with Qualsys or DSC specifically? If you use a relay receiver, we can go into their to their zones that way but you'd have to use our relay receiver. Yeah, and, and kind of the core maybe to that, that question is, is those are other proprietary wireless systems, um, but through easy relay receivers, some people still prov uh, uh, prefer our products or our wireless products. So even though they might be using a competitive wireless head end or panel, uh, we can connect a small amount of sensors through our relay receivers onto those panels. And especially if they're looking for a, a higher grade or they've got a tough construction material, maybe their waveform is not appropriate for that type of installation and they need a little more of a commercial grade type wireless, you can do that. So. Okay. And then there's a bonus point for anyone who knows what Qualsys stands for. Anyone? I don't have access to Google right now. <laughs> Quality of life systems. Oh. Yeah, I was out there a couple of years ago. Um, right. So, little little factoid there. And then I've got a, uh, another one coming in here. Other than hospitals, what type of buildings are using the temperature and water detectors? It's a great question. The the water detectors. I had a phone call today for fifteen hundred of them in an apartment building um, up in New York City. And it's not always, like I've said before, it's it's not always about the walls. It's about the neighbors below you, their artwork on the walls. And this is actually being mandated by the insurance companies. And they're going in and, and forcing these buildings to do this. So it's a great product because I'm either selling four of them or I'm selling uh, 1,400 of them on a project. And I, I've 
sold a couple down at the, the lower parts near the refrigerators and the storage room in a hotel in their restaurant because they didn't want people slipping. Um, so you see a couple going there. I, like I said, uh, during the presentation, I was in a 50 story building that had water go through 50, 40 of their IT closets before they realized their rooftop unit had a, a, a clog in the drain. So, you know, we like to say at Innovonics, we're just, we're only limited to your imagination. Yeah, there's virtually no installation where, you know, a water detector couldn't be appropriate. You know, Chris spoke to some of those. At virtually every business has water heaters and refrigerators. Um, you, we said outside of hospitals, but I, I remember hearing uh, about a restroom above a OR room in a hospital and uh, the toilets overflowed, shut down that OR. That cost that hospital about a million bucks a day that that OR was closed. So you know, pretty, pretty substantial uh, impact for a couple hundred dollar sensor that could have uh, resolved that situation. But, and we do touch other markets. You know, we're talking a lot about security and building automation and some of these things here. But uh, these these get used extensively in maybe senior care, big uh, assisted living facilities. You know, anything where you're monitoring just lots of uh, rooms that maybe look similar or have those those uh, potential got use with uh, uh, water that that could overflow or uh, you know something breaks down or a pipe or whatever that may be. So maybe. Hey, if you look at 2019, some of the biggest problems museums had were broken pipes and protecting their artwork. So some some of the biggest damage was done by water in the museums. It's true. In fact, we, you know, we're based in Maine and the Center for Maine Contemporary Art. My husband had a show up and it was closed after three weeks because the museum flooded. Mm. <laughs> so yeah. All, one of a kind things. That's one uh, of a kind thing. So, and that brings me to a question. How much water does it take to alarm the water detector? That's a function of the probe. And we work with two different probes, both the Honeywell and the Flare. And I'm um, Pretty sure the flare probe is one sixteenth of an inch of water, and the Honeywell one is just under a quarter inch. Yeah, uh, yeah. There was a little variation. I think I think flare has two, but uh, I contact us and we can uh, uh, dig that out. Or you could also contact Flare or uh, Honeywell directly, or look them up on the internet. And they'll have all the specifications. But we can get you a deeper dive if you need more information. Great. Fair enough. That, that sounds good. Um, all right, we've got one. Can the EN1210 be used outdoors? Yes, the, the, um, you need to put it in a weatherproof box, a plastic weatherproof box, mm -hmm. um, so we can get the signal out. Just know that if when you get into the really, really cold temperatures, that you're not going to get the longer battery life. That, you know, if you are in, in uh, we go down, our literature says minus four. Uh, we've changed the battery. It's actually now minus 20. Uh, but when you get below the, the zero degrees, it's very hard on battery life and you will get the lower range of, of what we say. So an EN1210 is three to five years. If you have it outside, it's gonna be closer to three. We're actually monitoring a lot of chicken houses with them outside. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. And Chris brings up a great point there. You know, being a wireless company in general, uh, battery life is extremely important to us. So everything we design, you know, we're trying to get two, three, five years out of those batteries most times, and, and we're successful in most cases. But there are some specialty things. You use them outside. You know, you want to be be aware and, and inform your customer on those things. But in general, uh, I would say that's another thing that we're renowned for, you know, great design and, and great battery life. And we do have people putting repeaters outside when they have multiple buildings across a campus, like uh, uh, some of the national parks, we see that. And uh, we have a weatherproof box you can put the repeater in. And STI, I mentioned them earlier, they make a little foil pack heater that you can put right in that cabinet with a repeater and it will be fine. Okay, great. Well, that that, the next question in the chat box, is there a limit to the number of repeaters in a single system? Kind of leads right into that. So uh, I, I, go ahead. Go ahead. ahead. <laughs> All right, yes and no is, is, is the answer to that. 
I mean, if you look at a, a Vista panel uh, from Honeywell, the, the Vista 128, our repeaters uh, use up four slots uh, for every one for supervision. So there's a physical limit on their end. Um, our, we have repeaters with, with uh, 50, 100, our systems with 50 or 100 repeaters out there. Our repeaters, it will not hop more than 10 times. Okay. So that if you were to put a, if the range of a repeater outside in a perfect world is a mile, you're not going to be able to sit there and, and put them two miles apart and then hop, hop, hop for 50 miles. That's not going to work. But doing a high rise, doing a campus, it, uh, repeat, multiple repeaters are talking to each other. So you will not get all those hops. Uh, it's not uncommon in a high rise in New York where the repeater on the 40th floor, even though the repeaters in between, is talking to the repeater down on the second floor. So it, it's only going to hop once or twice before it, um, before that signal winds up in the receiver. Yeah. We can, help, we can help people lay that out. Yeah. And we can also provide technical guidance, you know, from besides us sales guys, you know, our, our technical team or engineers, you know, many times we don't have a hard limit on repeaters or some of the, the functionality of the number of endpoints and repeaters, but some of that plays off itself. So you kind of need to have a picture of the whole installation and we can kind of help measure that in general. But generally, you know, we can go hundreds of repeaters, which is, you know, far in excess of almost any other system, if not every other system out there. Uh, that, that scalability of our repeater network is uh, really impressive and, and some of the logic uh, built into the repeaters and just the way that we do it and that mesh network that it creates uh, really gives some significant advantage for those very large installations. So, all right, that's well put. Um, I've got another one here for you both. For, for the milestone system, um, for the milestone integration, are you limited to the number of cameras? Uh, milestone will tell you no, that, that it's unlimited for them. The receiver that we're connecting to them with has a limit of 3,000 transmitters. Okay. That's pretty yeah, good. That does bring up a point too. So even when I was talking about the repeater, you know, uh, limits on some of those, there are limitations to our integration partners and in how they design things at, at sometimes. So some of our partners, you know, I talked about Honeywell and Bosch and you know, some of those others. Sometimes they need to put limits on how many repeaters could be added to one of their system or, you know, milestone. They're going to dictate how many um, cameras if there's any limits on that. So you do need to um, either reach out to us or reach out to that partner that we work with and let's make sure that the limits are appropriate for your installation. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you for that, Eric and Chris. Um, got a couple more here. I see we're coming up on getting close to the top of the hour. Can transmitters trip the same relay on a relay receiver? That's another one. Yes, yeah, absolutely. So you can have, if you have five transmitters in a conference room, you can have them trip the same uh, relay activating a camera if you want. So all the, all those conference room transmitters trip relay one, relay one goes to the D, to the DVR or whatever you want to do with that. Sometimes that confuses people. Those are on our add-on relay receivers. Um, we'll have the number of zones and the number of transmitters that can be used on those. So if you think of like a bank of bank tellers, the response area is going to be to those three you know, folks that might be all in a row. You can put those transmitters all on the same zone so that any one of them hits the button, it's going to trip that same relay. So um, that's, that's where you can use more transmitters than the actual zones. If you need individual point identification for each endpoint, then you need to go off the zones as the number of endpoints. So another thing, just clarify those, reach out to us, we can help you through that. All right, um, let's got another one coming in here. So we've got how far outside can a duress button transmit? You know, in, in a perfect world, if you're out on the salt flats, it's 2000 feet. Okay. So 
right? Now, the things to throw in there are you're typically taking that signal into a building, so there's going to be some degradation of the signal doing that. And also be cognizant if it's winter and there are no leaves on the trees. And then you're going to have all the foliage come out in the spring and summer. That can also reduce um, the signal. So just be, and that's what the, the survey kit does. It takes all that guesswork out of it. Yeah. And, and uh, boy, Chris was even, for a salesperson, he was being pretty conservative there. Uh, I've, I've heard anecdotal evidence that really those repeaters in open outdoor range can go well over a mile. So, um, but that's the benefit of using a survey kit or you know reaching out to our technical resources you know we can we've got some tools that can help you actually determine and it's more appropriate to um, do it on site at your customer's installation and really find out how our signal propagates right in front of them a great way to prove the technology and also you know just build the appropriate network for the customer all right great well if you do have anything else you'd like to add, I don't have any other questions coming in right now. Um, this is anything else from the presenters today? No, thank you very much. That was a great batch of questions from everyone. And uh, as as we've said several times, you know, please reach out to us and let us uh, help you with your next installation and either uh, from a ground up wireless installation or just, you know, some add on of a, a couple needed things where you don't have to tear up a place to add a few duress buttons or something, uh, we can help. So please reach out. Excellent. Well, thank you both, Eric and Chris. Thank you to Innovonics for sponsoring this webinar with Security Systems News. And thank you to everybody who attended and all your great questions. Thanks all. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, Eric. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.